I don't think any books can tell a student really the impact of a natural disaster on a population. But seeing it firsthand allows them to experience it. If I would have had that experience at 18 instead of 28, um, I don't think you would have ever see me leave school in the first place. Saw some incredible things. It was an amazing trip. <laughs> and it was pretty life changing. You're learning in a practical sense and applying what you study to something that will actually make a difference and make somebody's life better. I'm Cherith Letargo. I'm a geology professor here at Lone Star Kingwood, and this is my ninth year. As an educator, one of my challenges is to enhance student learning. And the best way that I've found is hands-on activities and field trips. Now for our environmental geology honors class, we're going to take it one step further and our field trip will be to the Philippines. I'm a professor of biology and also a service learning coordinator. This is our first international service learning project for the whole district. And actually, we're one of the only community colleges in the nation that are probably doing what we call international service learning. Um, what the service learning component means is we're taking the curriculum from the course, in this case the geology course, and applying it to a volunteer activity in which the students use what they learn in the classroom in a real volunteer situation. I'm a La Reference librarian. I've been here for almost, I guess, well, just about four years now. My interest in this trip is to kind of see where the organization that I've been involved in, what they're doing, as well as also make some contacts with and investigate how the library system works in the Philippines. The service and the geology and, you know, what the goals of our program are just kind of all congeal together. It's really neat. So um, we're using the Philippines as a, mo a model of how geological disasters can create poverty as well as political and, and social issues. The Philippines uh, is composed of about 7,000 islands and with the luck of the draw it sits in a natural disaster area where it has uh, active typh typhoons, destructive typhoons hitting it about six maybe eight times a year and then it also has volcanoes and it also has earthquakes so with this you get uh, a lot of people who are getting relocated or they have to leave their communities when the natural disasters impact them and they settle in slum communities in Metro Manila. But what's nice about it is we also have an organization in the Philippines called uh, Gawad Kalinga and their mission is to take poor people no matter how they got poor and basically build them into what we call sustainable communities in which the people are, are living at a decent income and basically in charge of their own lives. In Gawad Kalinga is uh, very difficult to explain in a few words, but it is basically uh, the journey of uh, our people you know, to our own uh, dream of building a country that, that we can be proud of. When you read about it, it's really inspiring. It, it's a lot like the Habitat for Humanity model. So it's that whole idea of, of taking care of people's basic needs, which is of course is shelter. But it goes beyond just providing shelter. So instead of building homes, what they're doing is actually getting the people involved with the transformation of that community so that they stay there and they don't leave that, that place. So for sustainability, uh, that can be defined in several ways, but the main definition is that you provide resources that will last for generations to come. So it can be environmental, it can be economic, and it can be political. Sustainability is basically a model of harvesting what people need, but also meeting the needs of protecting the environment and protecting future generations, because that's not typically done. And particularly when we look at uh, rural poor areas, people basically just take what they can get out of the land and take for immediate need. And they're not necessarily thinking about what am I going to do five years from now, ten years. And, and they're not necessarily providing for the next generation either. So, so it's a very neat model. My name is Bethany Jordan. I go to the Lone Star Community College, several different campuses, architecture major, going for my environmental architecture degree. I will be working with the 
waste treatment and the wastewater treatment. I'll be evaluating what they are currently using in the village and in the area, which most of the area is minimal, um, and evaluating with that and what the available resources are, how could it be improved and practically be made more sustainable and more environmentally friendly. Uh, my name is Brian Glazier. I'm an economics major. I personally want to go and do a little bit of economic surveying with the residents and see what, you know, what their real individual economics problems are, not just what I can find on the library website, so on and so forth, you know, what those 100, 150 individuals we're going to be dealing with actually think will improve their lives. My name is Casey Lawson. I go to Lone Star College, Kingwood. I am studying to become a teacher. I hope to look at the school system that they have there. Basically the way that they're set up there and the things that they study, the, the area of study. I'd like to see how, just how they run things and how, how they do teach the students there. My name is Lance Massey. I'm a geology major. My particular project involves basically water. Uh, what are the best sources that they can get you know, for drinking water? How can they best uh, rid themselves of the waste? I'll be testing several samples for different contaminants, uh, really to compare and find the best source that they can use. We're definitely going to be working very closely with people when we go on a trip over there to the Philippines. Um, we're going to be heavily involved in the community effort there. Everybody's going to be helping us. We're going to be helping everybody else. So it's really, really is a marriage type of project, you know. Each time I have taken a trip, it ha I've gotten something out of it emotionally. And if we were there to help people, you get more out of it always. So yes, I do expect to get something out of it. And I expect to be able to learn quite a bit that I can bring back to other communities and with my future work as well. I definitely expect to see a world that is totally unfamiliar. You know, it's like here in the United States, there's just so much that's taken for granted. The people that I come into contact with daily are, you know, they have everything that they need. And I know there's people here that don't that are the same way, living in poverty, but I think it would make me a better person just, just being there with the people and seeing the way that they live. I've never left the continental United States, so this will be my first trip out and with a background in things like economics and anthropology. You know, it's highly interesting to me and definitely a, a chance to make a difference. You know, can we experience a new culture and grow from it? You know, bring, bring what we learned back here to better our lives and perhaps, you know, make their lives better as well. On the first day, the first task at hand was to meet with the Gawad Kalinga staff and uh, employees because the students needed to get an overview of what the whole program is about. So we stopped by their uh, office over in Quezon City and we had a chance to meet with Tony Meloto. He's the founder of the whole program. You know, the whole thing you know, is basically to just address basic human needs. Land for the landless, home for the homeless, food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, and light for those in darkness. Then we went to the Philippine Volcanology Institute, also in Quezon City. So it was a good experience for the students to learn about the Taal volcano that they were going to be climbing uh, in the next couple of days during the trip. We also got to play with the earthquake simulator so that we could experience how earthquake tremors would be given different uh, magnitudes. On the second day, we woke up bright and early. We were met by the Gawad Kalinga guide at the hotel so that we could actually visit an urban setting of the Gawad Kalinga villages. So we first went to uh, GK Pinagsama. This is an interesting village because this used to be a squatter area that they had demolished and rebuilt the homes, but it's still actually the ones living in that slum environment that are occupying the homes. So for their livelihood, uh, they have an internet cafe. So that's what they uh, get their livelihood from to, to help the village exist. Like, I remember being struck at one point seeing a um, dump truck 
that had been going through the villagers collecting trash pull out onto a fairly major street and dump the trash on the side of the street for the people to dig through and see what they could sell. One thing that really struck me from this whole activity was the creativity that the students showed, the critical thinking, the problem-solving skills that they had showed after the trip. Um, they came back with projects that are going to be usable. So it's not just a classroom project that will stay with me after they graduate, but it's a project that I can send back to the GK program that they may be able to use. I went there kind of focused on developing some sort of economically sustainable model, you know, trying to identify, you know, high costs and uh, only took the first village to, to see what that thing was as far as I was concerned. Um, they're spending a lot of money per family on just bringing water into the, into the community, uh, pumping water from wells. And I am familiar with uh, cistern systems and gravity cistern systems that don't require any electricity. So that seemed like a great way. And cistern system definitely looks like it's something I can do cheaply and put in place fairly quickly that we can even retrofit it if necessary. So that seemed like the best bet for me. So that's what I've been going for. From the GK Pinagsama village in Taguig, we went to GK Baseco in Tondo. So just for everyone's information, Tondo is not a safe place in the Philippines. Growing up there, I was not allowed to even go near that place because it's the number one crime area for the whole city. But with uh, GK taking over, we were able to visit it and it was not a very scary place as I had imagined when we went to Baseco which gave us the best look at the people we were trying to help and why they needed it and what we were doing and how moved everyone was, in particular um, Dr. Latargo by the little girl pouring water over herself for a shower in the street uh, when she stopped to walk over and go to the bathroom uh, and then fin went back to finish her shower. Um, that was very moving for everyone. It was, because it was so against everything that, you know, anyone had ever seen. I've witnessed that type of poverty before and have been working with that type of poverty for years. Um, and when we were getting the initial perceptions of the students and trying to explain the poverty, I don't think they got the point. They, they were looking at poverty from a developed nation perspective. And, and, you know, they were thinking of maybe a tenement or maybe thinking of, of a shack somewhere in, in Texas but to see their faces when they got into the middle of real developing nation poverty and the attitudes that go along with it and seeing the crime and everything else that goes with it, it was just moving for them. They did not realize that people could live with so little and some people are forced to be with so little. A lot of people don't see that because, I mean, they've grown up here and they know nothing other than here. To go over there and uh, you, it's, an awakening. Really just wanted to make me want to help. I wanted to get out there and I wanted to use my hands, get down there and get dirty, although I know that's not necessarily the most practical application for us, but it really made me want to work side by side and help lift these people up. The things that strike you most oddly about extreme poverty like that is not at first the poverty, though, that's what you see is how they're living and the scraps they're building their houses out of but it's how they're living, it's that they are. They're going on, they're still very gracious, they're still happy, they're still living and going on like that is normal. Um, you know, just knowing that someone lives the way they have to live and can have such a good attitude, the friendliness and everything, knowing of the class distinctions there. If I had that in my everyday life, I think I would hold a lot more anger than what's coming from them. They most definitely need the help and they're so grateful to get it when they do get something that I think people struck me more in how they react to it. It does make you appreciate what you got more than anything. You can definitely walk away feeling a little spoiled and when I got back I did have kind of that moment it's like well you know after what we saw how can you do this on a daily basis and learning to find practical ways to make better decisions that impact them less over there that you don't feel as guilty about now that you have this greater knowledge. 
I went in initially looking at um, the green materials that they were using, um, the recycling materials and the wastewater and waste treatment. But after meeting with the Green Goad Kalinga group, uh, I was asked to do a design and help with the next village coming up. So I'm actually working on a house design for that. And for the design they've asked me to do, they, one of the things they asked to improve is airflow so that they can cool the houses uh, because it's so hot in there. Uh, so some of the design things that they want to incorporate from places like us is the um, engineering techniques and how to um, do a more efficient design that functions without using energy. And that afternoon, we had to go to a meeting that was being uh, held at the University of the Philippines because Tony Meloto was giving a speech and he had acknowledged the presence of the Lone Star College students as being an important part of the GK program. If we fail, we lose nothing. Trying is everything. The journey is the victory. There is no failure for those who believe. It is as relevant to you students and faculty of UP and those coming from other universities, including Lone Star College of Texas. <laughs> On the third day, our goal was to look at rural settings uh, of GK villages. So we all boarded the van and headed over to Batangas where we were uh, up for a treat because the GK villages in the rural setting is very different from the one in the city. There's a lot more land that, uh, that, we, that the villagers can occupy as opposed to the city where sometimes there's two stories of homes being built to, for a family of, of six. So our first stop is GK Kalayaan village, still in Lipa, and this is, this is where we were met with uh, villagers giving us shells, necklaces, uh, as a token of their appreciation for our visit. From there, we moved on to look at GK Bermuda, where they have tofu as their sense of source of livelihood. We got to visit some schools, and Casey Lawson was looking at the curriculum to see where we could help on that end. And what we found out was the curriculum is up to speed, so the help that they need is from the supplies. A lot of them were lacking, like um, classroom supplies, and the teachers just needed things, I guess, to spice up the classroom. So what I'm doing is I'm making a, a brochure to pitch to different corporations and companies. And with that, hopefully they'll either donate supplies or they'll donate funds so that we can buy supplies and ship them over to um, put in the classrooms. So from GK uh, Bermuda, we proceeded to the Reunion Village. And this village is a totally new concept because what they are doing there is combining the beneficiaries. And there's a bed and breakfast, and there's a hotel, as well as retirement homes for Filipinos in the United States who may want to retire there. And the goal, the sustainability there, the livelihood is from the villagers doing all the work in the bed and breakfast in the hotels and also for the retirement homes. They grow their own crops, so there's a lot of uh, coconuts that we were able to, to partake of and fruits during this day. I did water uh, testing as far as collecting samples from various villages and uh, testing for nitrates, heavy metals, uh, pH, or have you. One goal that I see is uh, enabling them to test the water themselves and monitor progress as far as quality that they can you know, measure. I mean, that's definitely a, an, an advantage for them. From there, we went to the, it's called the Arkal Village that stands for Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Lipa and the Humboldt, Texas village uh, that was donated by the Humboldt Kingwood Phil Am Foundation is in that area. When you do this type of work, particularly in international development, you don't get many thank yous. You don't really see the stakeholders and the people that are benefiting from it. And, and our students and Dr. Latarga and I had an opportunity for the first time actually be with the villagers that we provided the housing for and that we did the work for. And um, 
they put on a play for us. We did not expect that they had a gathering and they dropped everything they were doing and the children put on a, a play, they sang a song about the village and then the, um, the women put on some traditional Filipino dancing. I guess my favorite event that they have was when the people there at the site came out and they put on, the kids did their song and dance and the ladies danced. It was moving, I mean it was incredibly moving because they, they, were, they were so appreciative and I know a couple of students just were out in tears. It was really kind of funny to see the students that way. And even Dr. Latargo was in tears, which I probably shouldn't say also. But then the other thing he asked us to do was basically come up and just give a speech to the people, you know, just in recognition of the village and what they've done to the village too. So it was very moving for all of us. Uh, the Filipino people, uh, very friendly, very outgoing, warm, always smiling as far as I could tell. You, know, you talk to them and it's like the world's a great place. It's, it's like they want to come out and say hello. They're so different. <laughs> They're in so many ways so gracious and polite as part of their culture. Um, and an odd mix between more and less emotional than people here tend to be. You see their emotions less, but they're more, much more expressive. So you, they talk with their hands and their face and their body much more than their words. They all seem very humble and welcoming. They do make you feel like family. That's, that's really kind of how I, I felt about it. They bring you into their homes, they bring you to their meal table. They, you know, very open people, very, very welcoming. It was a great experience. Like when we were in Batangas, uh, that one day we ate like eight times because everywhere we went, everyone had food ready. To put, you know, these are people with next to nothing. They have full meals spread out for us when we arrive, or you know, a party set up. And there were 12 homes that were occupied, but eight needed help with the painting, so the students were able to do their service learning by helping paint all the homes that were up already. Still in Batangas, our next route was to go to Taal Volcano. This is where the students were going to see a real live active volcano that has been uh, on level one alert for a whole year now. So this is where they will get a chance to see and evaluate whether a natural disaster like a volcano, like Taal, if it erupts, will it impact the newly built relocated villages that they had just uh, seen. Uh, we have to take a boat to get to the crater and then climbing it is a real hard thing to do so we rode horses. The, the horse ride up to the volcano was an experience in itself. So. But just to let you know on the way back we did climb down. But from here we were able to see the steam coming out from the crater and we were also able to to see other parts of the volcano that were uh, spewing out steam. From the geology aspect, there are things there that you can't find anywhere else on Earth. I mean, just being in that volcano and just ring after ring, you know, just the immensity of it and, uh, you know, the sulfur. I mean, just seeing it on that kind of a scale really gives you some appreciation what the Earth can do. You know, we were in this, on top of this volcano that was actually active and steaming. It's a little bit, a little bit scary. Favorite moment, I would say, be just being on top of uh, the Taal volcano and sitting there looking out over the view. I mean, it just really was very peaceful. It really helped center me as far as just my personal feelings, you know. Um, that was really relaxing. Not something I get a lot of because I work full time, go to school full time, have the community associations I'm associated with and everything. So it was nice to be able to just kick back for that one moment at least. And I really did enjoy that the most, I, I will admit. <laughs> uh, no earthquakes were experienced, thank goodness, and we were able to make it back uh, safely. As an educator, my first uh, goal is for a student to learn academically. And with this trip, I think the problem solving, the critical thinking skills have been enhanced. But what I did not expect was the emotional change that the students got or the emotional experience that they got from the trip was also going to hold them through uh, for the rest of their lives. I think they matured as far as their perspective of what a person can do, what needs to be done, and how to evaluate the needs of the, of the poor and the needs of other people. I think they learned to be a little more culturally sensitive to, to 
other, you know, to, to basically other situations and other peoples. But even just watching the students as they went from from village to village, or you know, went through those experiences, I think uh, you could see see the impact uh, that it had on them, even if you didn't really talk about it a whole lot. And from what they've written coming back, I think several of them are really committed to continuing to do something in that vein, either with that project or something else. So that's a really incredible kind of um, door to open. The experience was good, um, and it was pretty life-changing. A lot of my coworkers, my mother, my girlfriend have all said they've noticed a difference since I've been back as far as me being more patient and coming off a little better in public. So I definitely had a, a little bit of a personal growth experience out there. Um, overall, that, that's what I really took away from it. Um, before I went, I was quite the complainer, and I felt like going and seeing the people there, they really, most of the people that we saw had little or nothing, and it just made me feel bad about the way that I complain about things here, and see, to see that they're so happy with what little they have, and over here it's quite different, where people want more, more, more. We learned more in that week trip than we have through the semester. And more about all of the subjects. I mean, we learned things about biology and sociology and psychology. I learned things about architecture. I mean, I want to go back. I want to go continue my work. I want to help them. You know, if I can go out and help with the village construction, that's great. If I can go out and uh, help clean up a problem, that's great, and I feel good about it, and it, it helps me to grow and gain in my experiences and live a fuller life, I think. I came back, I guess, thinking about what can I do to be a better neighbor, because that's one thing that was uh, really about being in those villages is that, you know, of course they're so close, close to each other, you can't help but being a, a close neighbor, but to be a good neighbor. What I've realized is both sides are learning as much from each other. For example, I don't think any books can tell a student really the impact of a natural disaster on a population. But seeing it firsthand allows them to experience it. So they learn from that experience. In the same token, by the student sharing their expertise or whatever knowledge they have from this culture to the Philippine culture, then the Filipinos learn from it as well. This has really blossomed and what we've developed I hope is a model. Uh, we're going to hope to present again at the um, United Nations. I have a feeling we're going to be invited back to talk to UNESCO about how our project went and again how two-year colleges that kind of stand up there with universities and and be a model for you know doing real big academic things like this. I would definitely recommend this program. It, it's a great way for to open the eyes of students to make them more appreciative. I can tell you as an adult student coming back to school, if I would have had that experience at 18 instead of 28, um, I don't think you would ever see me leave school in the first place. You know, it makes you really appreciate everything you got and not to waste every opportunity that you get. Oh, I highly recommend it. Uh, even if they think at first that they can't pay for it, most likely they can find a way. You can find a sponsor. They will look for more funding. Uh, don't let that scare you away because it is well worth the effort to find the funding. Well, I really hope that the district would continue to do projects such as these at International Learning um, because I think it's great. It's a good growing experience. It's good for the kids. You get to see a different side of how people live. Well, Lone Star College as a whole is working very hard to spread their program and to really improve it. And I think they're doing a fairly good job of that. And they've gotten a lot of new programs. And I've done service learning on a couple of different campuses now, and I have to say the one at Kingwood definitely beat the other hands down. I think we got the most out of it, and it was definitely a very good trip.